Hello. This is the second of our series of videos honoring the fallen of the IDF throughout Israel's wars. Today we honor Private Yaakov Mizrahi. He fell on the 27th day of Cheshvan, 5717, or November 1st, 1956, during the Sinai campaign of that year. Yaakov went out to battle and never returned. His place of burial is not known, and today we honor him. What I'd like to discuss today is the Zechira, the memory of Ma'amad Har Sinai. The Torah gives us a specific command. We're enjoined to remember the experience of Har Sinai. The Torah says, Ra'ki shamer lecha u'shmor nafshecha ma'od, pen tishkach et advarim asher e'u e'necha, u'pen yesuru milvavecha kol yemei chayecha. We have to guard ourselves very carefully, lest we forget the things which our eyes saw, and lest they leave our hearts all the days of our lives and the lives of our children forever. We always have to remember the event of Har Sinai. And the question is, what exactly is it about this event that we're remembering? The most obvious answer, perhaps the most immediate answer, would be that we're remembering the Torah. After all, we received the Torah at Har Sinai, and the goal of this mitzvah is to tell us that we can never forget the Torah, the mitzvah that we received at Har Sinai. But the language of the text doesn't seem to indicate this. If you look carefully, the Torah is not talking about the mitzvah. Remember the Torah that you received at Har Sinai. It's talking about the sights and the sounds, the things which your eyes saw, the things which your ears heard. You have to remember the experience of being at Har Sinai. That seems to be the emphasis of the text. And this is what the Ramban points out in his commentary. He says that the goal here is not to remember the mitzvot themselves. We have other places in the Torah which command us, which stress the importance of remembering the mitzvot. Here the goal is to remember that just as we have mitzvot, we need to remember as well where they came from. What is the source of the mitzvot? Where do we have them from? Why do we have them? And so the question then becomes, what exactly is the purpose of this command to remember the experience of Har Sinai? Something about that day changed us fundamentally. Something about remembering Har Sinai creates a fundamental switch in the way that we act, the way that we live as Jews, as people who keep the mitzvot overall. But what exactly was that change? Rav Yitzchak Hutner, in his work Pachad Yitzchak, Pachad Yitzchak, points out that the Torah has already told us has already started to describe what the goal of the experience of Har Sinai was. In the story itself, described in, in Sefer Shemot, the Jews recoil in fear and terror after they hear God speak, and they tell Moshe, you need to get involved, you need to be the intermediary. You listen to God, and you tell us what he says. We can't, we can't handle listening to God directly. We don't want to die. And Moshe responds to the people by saying, you don't understand. The goal here was not to overwhelm you, to terrify you. The goal here was to instill an important lesson. God wanted to place a fear of him on your faces for all time so that you never sin. It was a tremendous kindness, a lesson that God was trying to impart in Harsina. What exactly is that lesson of having yira ala panim, yira uh, that's expressed in the face? So Rav Hutner points out is, that the Gemara says that this event of Har Sinai created a specific characteristic in the Jewish people for all time. We know that the Jewish people are defined by three uh, overarching character traits, Rachmanim, Bashanim, Goblek, Chasadim, that Jews are merciful, that they're bashful, and that they do kindness for other people. How do we know that Jews are bashful, that they're Bashanim, they're embarrassed? From this Pasuk, from the Pasuk that describes Har Sinai, so that God's fear will be on your faces. So we see that this concept of fear on the face has something to do with being bashful and between, with being embarrassed. What exactly does that mean? What does it mean to be embarrassed? And what's the difference between doing mitzvot or being a Jew without being embarrassed, without having this yira, and being a Jew with this yira? So what Rav Hutner points out is, that there's a fundamental difference. The difference between somebody who does things mechanically, who does things because they have to or because they're afraid of punishment, and somebody who does things because failing to do them makes them ashamed. What exactly is the difference? If I do mitzvot because I'm scared of punishment, those mitzvot don't define me. The accomplishment of the mitzvot are not about me. If I am scared of parking in the wrong spot on the street because I'm going to get a parking ticket, 
That's not because I define myself as a person who parks in the right place. That's just a fear of punishment. But there's a very big difference between a person who attempts to do mitzvot and should they fail, feels embarrassed, feels ashamed. Shame implies that my sense of self, my sense of who I am, is somehow caught up in this attempt to do the mitzvot. Feeling embarrassed in the presence of God and trying to understand, come to terms with what that means, shows that I'm keeping mitzvot for a very different reason and coming from a very different place. And I think there's a profound lesson here in our lives as Jews. There's a question we always have to ask ourselves. Why are we keeping mitzvot? Are we keeping mitzvot because that's what's socially acceptable? Are we keeping mitzvot because we're afraid of punishment? That is certainly a, a tremendous level. But perhaps there's a higher level as well, and that seems to be what's defined here, of a concept of keeping mitzvot because I understand the importance. I understand the challenge which God gave us on Har Sinai to become better people, to build a nation which has a historical purpose. There's some sort of deeper guiding factor inside of my keeping of mitzvot, and it defines who I am. It's how I look at the world. It's how I define myself. And when I fail, if I should fail, I would feel embarrassed. I'd feel some level of shame because I haven't accomplished uh, what I set out for myself to accomplish. That's an important lesson to ask ourselves as Jews. Uh, it's an important lesson which the Torah is commanding us to keep, to commanding us to consider according to Rav Hutner's interpretation. And it's an important uh, lesson of remembering Har Sinai uh, forevermore. Thank you.